Welcome to the Land Your Bet Sports Betting Show. Getting ahead of Tuesday's NBA playoff slate here. It's still Monday. Got some games still in action. This Celtics and Cavs game about to end. Looks like the Celtics are going to pull this one out. And then there's also that Thunder and Mavs game coming up right now. So I'll let you know how we did in those bets tomorrow. Had about seven plays, plus added about four of them on the live stream that happens every day, 5.30 p.m. Eastern. So I definitely recommend jumping in for that on YouTube and Twitter, where you can find that, as well as Instagram, if you're on there and want to check it out. But I've got seven early plays here for Tuesday that I want to get into right Right now with you guys so let's just jump right into them going back to the ant man baby i don't want to, I don't want to tell you over 29 and a half points i don't see how this man gets stopped the only one that's standing in his way is him if he decides not to shoot which he started to do a lot more once again in game four so we're gonna go back to him just the points this time we've been going points and assists but i got a couple a little bit of ladder plays style plays if you will over 29 and a half points is the core bet we got a full unit on that the leading scorer in this game you can get for even money on DraftKings, taking that for a quarter of a unit another quarter of a unit on the ladder here for him to go 35 plus which gets you plus 220 on your money looking to make some good scratch off of Ant in this game i don't know why we would stop now and now that he's back on the road it's even more dangerous when it comes to scoring for Ant-Man. 36 and a half points per game on the road in these playoffs and 35 points per game in the last four on average that he's scored, uh, gone up against Denver in Denver. That usage rate up to 32% as well in those games against Denver, 33 and a half percent usage rate on the road right now in the playoffs. So we got to keep going to the dude who's going to be shooting the most for this team. 25 field goal attempts in last game. After a passive game three that obviously wasn't very close and was over pretty quickly, but he took full responsibility for that. And we saw that him sort of amend that in the last game here with 25 field goal attempts, still shooting the ball really well, took eight threes, made three of them. He's going to keep taking those pull-up threes as well, which is a play that should work against Denver. Uh, as good as KCP has been defending him in the last couple of games, as good as he can be or anybody can be right now against Ant, he's still getting his shot off, man. So uh, if you want to talk about the leading score bet real quick, the reason I do like him over Joker and I think it's clearly between those two, especially when you get Joker in a situation with Gobert back in the series, back in the playoffs, right, after he missed one game. And now he's looking to score against him. Did that in game three for Joker and will continue and then did it really well in game four. Uh, needed a bit more in game four and game three, total blowout. So he didn't even really need to go over in that one. Now he's got about a 29 and a half point prop, even with Ant. I still think Ant is a better look here when Joker goes home. He's a bit more prone to assist rather than the points. So with Ant's tendencies to score on the road and Joker's to pass at home, we like him to lead the game in scoring. Plus, got to go 35 plus for Ant. If this is at all a close game, he should be right at about 35. Not the same can be said about his teammate, Carl Anthony Towns, who had a brutal, brutal game four. And we're still going to fade him in this game going to Denver, honestly. And I'm, I like adding the assist to it. Under 21 and a, and a half points and assists combined. Minus 102 on FanDuel. For Cat, like, I think less might be more. After he went 5 for 18 in this last game, took a ton of bad shots, had a ton of bad fouls as well. And they're going to continue to put him on Joker because they like Rudy Gobert as sort of the free safety, which means Joker's just going to keep going at him, man. Uh, and, and with with Cat in those situations, the fouls become very likely, right? So there's always that uh, possibility. Plus, Nas Reed still playing very well, still shooting very well. And if they find themselves needing a bit more offense, and to be honest, a bit more defense, because Nas has had an incredible defensive series versus Cat, who has not had a good defensive series. He can't stop fouling, including 50 feet from the basket. So the, the 18 field goal attempts he took last game, only hitting five of them, that's the worst game I can remember having him having in a while. So there might be a little bit of opportunity for positive regression from Cat from this last game. But I still think that there's something to the way that this uh, Nuggets team has guarded him. Even in last game, they gave him an open look at the top of the key early in the early going. After that, they gave him nothing. And he really had to go ahead and, and force the issue because he probably didn't see the ball as much as he wanted to see the ball because Ant was shooting the ball as he should be, or at the very least facilitating. And honestly, I'd rather have Mike Conley with the ball in his hands at this point than Cat, who makes very poor decisions. So the three potential assists for Cat, he's averaged that in the last two. Still getting three assists per game. That's not sustainable either, right? The regression is going to come down, and the potential assists are just rarely ever there for him. And now that we do have Gobert back in the series, you saw Cat go over cleanly in that second game. 27 points, I believe, had about 12 boards. A lot of that is the rebounding, right? He's 
one, it gets him going. There's no denying that. And two, it's the fact that he's got those second chance points coming his way when he does crash the boards uh, super well. But now that's going to be Rudy Gobert in his way. So I think those are going to be those those points should be a little bit harder to come by for him. Everything should be. Plus, I like adding the assist because it's just not something that he does. And the fact that he even got three assists per game in the last two is pretty ridiculous. One more bet for this game specifically before we move to the Knicks and Pacers. Michael Porter Jr. over two and a half threes. I got a half a unit on that because we get plus 102 on our money for him to hit the three in this one. He's either gone four or or basically one or none in the last uh, in this series, right? Uh, I, I think this plus 102 for him to hit three when we've seen his prop at three and a half threes in the Lakers series, which I know this is not the Lakers, uh, but we've seen it pretty high. So for him to get plus money to hit three, which is something he's done pretty consistently, yeah, I got to take that, even if it's just for half a unit. He's averaged 6.3 three-point attempts outside of this last game four, where he only uh, attempted two. But what you saw there was the reason he only attempted two was because of the fact that they were not helping out on Jamal Murray, that they had been defending that two-man game really well, the Wolves, with Jaden McDaniels or NAW, Nikhil Alexander-Walker, before game four. Even in game three, they still defended it pretty well, which is why you still saw uh, Porter Jr. take the five threes and make four of them just two games ago, right? Uh, now, then they switch it back. They switch it over to like, let's focus on Jamal, on Michael Porter Jr., not let him shoot at all and leave our guy just like draped to him. Fine, he only took two, but the, the spacing was wide open for Jokic and Murray in this last game. You saw Jokic with the 35. Murray had the 18 plus all those dimes. That, that They can't let that happen. That's the, the number one play that they have to stop, which is why you see Michael Porter Jr. always in these big games after maybe he goes quiet and the other two do their thing. What do we see happen? Like in this game, it's been in this series and in the playoffs, it's been the same thing. Every other game, he's going off for three because in the interim games, they're really uh, focusing on him and then they lose track of Murray and Jokic. You get the vibe here. Um, he's also better at home in general. So this is a big part of what I like for him. Three threes on the season versus 2.5 on the road, right? When he's at home, he's got three a game. When he's at home in the playoffs, 3.8 per game uh, at, in these playoffs specifically, such was the case last year with about a half a three more made when he's at home versus on the road. And with shooting and momentum, like, I, look, man, like, I'm going to believe in that with when it comes to these home road splits for MPJ, a guy who really vibes off the crowd. So we're going to take him to get three here in game five as they get back home to Denver. Quick reminder about that Discord. It is the reason that we cashed so well today in that Boston and, and Cleveland game because of the fact that Donovan Mitchell was still up in the air. We didn't quite know. We were able to attack Harris LeVert props. I was able to reverse my Max Struess pick, which I had before Donovan Mitchell was even listed as questionable. So that was really uh, brutal for those of you that weren't able to get and buy out of the Max Struess stuff. We went the other direction. As soon as I saw Donovan Mitchell out, we attacked Max Struess props. We took him to hit the threes. He got that cleanly in the first half. Uh, and the Karis LeVert play was another one. Al Horford on the under. All that stuff happened in the Discord. So jump in there. Link in the description. Also want to remind you about the uh, props.cash. 25% off if you don't yet have the uh, the, the subscription here to props.cash. This is what I'm using on the live stream every day at 5.30. Just a quick reminder that we are doing that once again on the weekdays every day, 5.30 p.m. Eastern, that we're doing this before tip of these first uh, couple games in the playoffs. So jump in tomorrow. We'll be there on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, every day moving forward. And you can, you'll you see me using props.cash in there. So hopefully, you uh, if you haven't checked it out yet, you can at least get a little trial or get in there with that code and get you 25% percent off let's go east and we're looking at this uh knicks and pacers game and as a knicks fan not confident right now uh vibes are not high for new york fans right now here's one reason neesmith finally guarding jalen brunson if you look at the last couple games neesmith finally took over entirely and is now the primary defender on jalen brunson um, I say finally because that's what Pacers pan fans have probably been waiting for. Brunson was cooking Nemhard. This is all you need to know right here. 9.6 points per game against Neesmith. And he that's in the last uh, three games where he's been actually guarding him as the, well, I'm sorry, the last two games where he's actually been guarding him as the primary defender. That's even lower. Obviously, Brunson didn't play that much in game four because that was a blowout and the game was over at halftime. But Part of that was because Neesmith was limiting him in this last game, three for nine. The game before, nine for six, or six for 16, rather. So his, his field goal percentage when he's going up against Neesmith now is at 39%. Against McConnell, it's also been 27%. And you see both of those dudes now, the primary defender on Brunson for pretty much the whole game. There's no more Nembhard coming in to do any of this stuff anymore, right? He was absolutely cooking him in 14, in like five minutes per game. He was getting 14 points per game against Andrew Nembhard. They could not leave him in there for that anymore. So now we've 
we've got Neesmith on him, which is going to affect a lot of stuff here. Uh, the three-point percentage way better for the Pacers when Neesmith's on him, even McConnell as well. The turnovers, one uh, assist to four turnovers in the last couple games with Neesmith all over him. So everything just gets so much better. I mean, Neesmith will foul a little bit here and there, but didn't foul much last game. Only one free throw that he gave up to Jalen Brunson. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not a good look right now for Brunson, who's definitely hurt, got that toe issue. And that's going to be a big reason why my first bet is going to unfortunately be to fade Jalen Brunson here. I'm taking him for under 32 and a half points. Um, I just, so much happens when Neesmith is able to then focus on Brunson and not have to worry about double teams. One, they don't have to leave the shooters. So there's fewer assists also available for Brunson once you don't have to double team him. And those guys are able to stick to their shooters like Dante DiVincenzo, Alec Burks, Miles McBride, all those guys that he might be looking for to, to pass off of. They're not around. So he's really got to force the action, but there's no more Nemhard to abuse on offense. Like I said here, nine for 25 in these last two games versus Neesmith for that six, like 30% basically from the field. And on defense, if you watch the way that uh, Rick Carlisle finally is making Jalen Brunson work, the Knicks tried to hide Brunson on guys like Nemhard or even Neesmith in the corner, guys like that. And at this point, that dude is running up and screening for someone like Tyrese Halliburton or whoever the main ball handler is. So that brings Jalen Brunson into the action on defense. It makes him work way harder than he wants to or the Knicks want him to because they need all of his stamina ready for the offensive end. We've seen that. Carlisle figured some stuff out, man. It took him long enough, but he figured it out. If you still have J Jalen Brunson projected for 38 minutes in this game, which I would love to be able to project him for 42, but I don't know that he can play a full 42 right now with the way that he's hobbling around. So we're going to go under for my favorite player of all time in Knicks history. I don't feel good about the Knicks winning this game either, which is definitely correlated to Brunson going under 32 and a half points. Speaking of Neesmith, I'm going to take his PR and go over on the points and rebounds for minus 120 on DraftKings here for Aaron Neesmith, in part because he's going to be there mirroring Jalen Brunson's minutes. Like it would take a lot of fouls for them to keep uh, Neesmith on the bench where they don't necessarily need his offense, to be honest with you. They could use his rebounding, which has been really good in this series. But most importantly, they just want him to, to guard Brunson. So you still, you'll, you're still going to see him get 34-ish minutes, even if he gets a couple fouls in the first half. I don't think they're going to be worried about that because they're just going to be like, keep stopping Brunson, and hopefully we'll build a big enough lead if you do foul out. But either way, I still feel confident in his ability to sort of stay home with Brunson since he's so much bigger. Don't fall for the fakes. Realize you can bother his shot without it. That is what I expect to happen. If you look at the minutes going up in this series, sort of uh, ex exemplifying what we're talking about here, right? It's an illustration of the fact that his minutes have, have been tied to his ability to, or not only his ability, but his priority being guard Brunson now as the primary defender. The two games now where he's uh, been the primary defender, he got 34 in game two, 38 minutes in game three. And that's really more indicative of what's going to happen here in game five, because in game four is a blowout. And he still almost, he still got over his PR in 24 minutes in this last game in a blowout because those rebound chances are also going up a big time for him. Uh, eight in the first game and nine in the second. Then those minutes really uh, climb up 10 and 12 in the last two. And it's because, in part, because he's a little bit closer to the basket now, rather than guarding shooters out on the perimeter, he's getting closer to the bucket because that's where Jalen Brunson would prefer to shoot from, right? He's gone over in three of four in this series with 15.3 points and rebounds combined in 31 and a half minutes. But we just told you, or at least I did, that he's going to be getting more than that 31 and a half, closer to 38 and 40 now because of how important he becomes to the defense. There, they, there's nobody nearly as good. Like McConnell will come in, and at times he'll be the one guarding Brunson when Neesmith comes off the floor. But Neesmith ain't going to be coming off the floor for very much, even with McConnell out there. So we're going to continue to take him to project him at about 9, 10 even field goals. I have it as 8 to 9 in 36 minutes. I think he's good for 8 to 10. That's about where you put him on this. And the, the easy buckets that he's getting at times, plus the free throws because he's going all the way to the rim. All he has to do is hit one of the threes he missed in this last game. and He's easily climbing over the 9.5 points that he's, uh, that he's been getting here uh, and that his prop is right now. So going to keep going with Neesmith to get over 14.5 points and rebounds in this one final bet we got alec burks the ageless and he's not even really that old he's like 28 or something like that or maybe he's like 32 but either way he's not that old he's still got plenty of miles on the uh tread on the tires if you will and tibbs has started to trust this man it's just that simple like he did not trust uh, alec burks before he had to trust alec burks and he had to trust him because he needs experience and he needs offense at this point like miles mcbride Great player. He'll still be in for some of those backup Jalen Brunson minutes, but I expect Alec Burks to keep getting 22, 24 minutes.
minutes and expect him to shoot because that's what he's out there to do. He's certainly not out there for his defense. In fact, that's why he couldn't get on the floor at first. But now Tibbs has to reverse that. He just doesn't have the bodies to maintain, you know, DDV and, and Jalen Brunson running the offense by themselves, essentially, and Josh Hart. Uh, but the shooters are those two dudes, right? And now he's going to need more shooters out there. Bring Alec Burks on the floor. He's got a 23 and a half. He's just a spark plug, man. 23 and a half percent usage rate in the last two games. He only played 22 in this last game, even though it was all subs from the third quarter on, right? So he's more of a rotational player than he is just a straight like backup reserve at this point. He is the seventh man, if you will, off the bench. And, and I will. It's he, he and Miles McBride who are coming off the bench and getting these minutes for them. So I expect him to get another 22, 23 minutes. And he's killed the Pacers whenever he's been in this position before. He played them as the first game as a Nick after getting traded from the Pistons. Uh, in February, had 20 point or 17 points in that game in 22 minutes. So I still think he's just going to be a bad matchup for them. Like the way that he can either shoot, and if they run him off the three point line in places like the corners, then he's able to finish at the rim against one of the, if not the worst uh, rim protecting team in the league in the Pacers, which has not gotten much better. Just the Knicks haven't been driving all the way to the bucket quite as much, except for this dude who's averaging seven and a half free throw attempts now in those last two games because the Pacers will foul so much. They're the worst team at giving up free throws. They're the worst team at defending the paint. And if you, if you, uh, if they run him off the three point line, this dude knows what to do with it. Uh, I, I do think he brings a level of experience and calm that is just going to, they're going to expect him to take those shots and, and, lead the way at times um, when he might be, I don't want to say the best option, but the best playmaking option when um, when Brunson's off the floor, it's between he and McBride. So if I sound sad while I'm talking about this, I didn't think it would come to this for the Knicks where they're going to have to rely on Alec Burks so heavily, but they will. And that should get him over nine and a half points for plus money for us. And that is all the time that I have for you guys in this one. Definitely jump in to that Discord. If you're not there yet, link is in the description of the video. And get into that live stream 5.30 p.m. Eastern every day now on the weekdays as we go over the bets that you guys want to look at. You bring them, bring the bets you want to look at. Jump in the comments. I share my screen, show you exactly how I'm looking at what we look at to get those bets every day. Hopefully making y'all better betters. So hopefully I'll see y'all at that live stream tomorrow, 5.30 p.m. Eastern. And until I do, happy betting.